Hey, folks, welcome back to Yellowhammer Now. I am Dale Jackson. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. We're going to have a conversation this morning uh, with State Senator Garland Gudger. He's going to join us uh, to discuss a couple of things going on in the Alabama legislature, including uh, a discussion about his bill that would allow people to go to the hospital and visit their loved ones who are sick. Now, this became an issue uh, during the COVID pandemic. And for some, it's still continuing now. And this bill would basically stop hospitals uh, from denying those visitations at the request of the families and loved ones of the individuals who are in the hospital. So let's bring uh, State Senator Garland Gutter on the program uh, here with us. We appreciate him taking the time uh, to join us. Uh, State Senator Gudger, uh, this was a big deal. You wanted this to come up during the special session uh, that took place, and uh, I guess there wasn't time to do it uh, or something along those lines. Uh, why wasn't there time to do it during the special session? Was it just more appropriate in the regular session? Welcome to the program, by the way. Why didn't this come up during the special session? Well, first of all, thanks for having me on the show, Dale. I uh, always appreciate that. Second, during special session, I decided to drop the bill during special session, uh, which caused a little bit of uh, uh, confusion to some of the people because we were only going to do the ARPA bills. But the reason that I did that is because I realized the funding for some of the healthcare care facilities was wrapped up in the ARPA money. And as you well know, the best way to get anything done in the Alabama State House is to have leverage. And so if I place this bill in the special session, at least it would be brought to the forefront. We would have to bring everybody to the table. And that's exactly what happened. And so from that also, we got publicity from the bill. And the great thing about doing that and having those fights in the special session was the fact of now that the road is paved for us to start tomorrow back in session on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, having a three-day work week coming up that I think that I will be able to use each and every day because all the stakeholders, all the different houses are on board. And I believe that this bill will pass straight through the Senate because of the hard work that the legislature did last week. So you talk about it passing straight through the Senate, getting it done. It's not that people oppose this. They just didn't want to see it brought up during this other legislative session because they felt it wasn't germane to the conversation. You know, what I found is when I'm talking to the different legislators, there were some legislators that it really have this has not affected them. And so it was not a high priority. Let me put that in quotations, a high priority to a lot of the people that I talked to. Um, I shouldn't say a lot, a few of the people that I talked to. But if you had someone that was a loved one in the hospital or in a nursing home facility that they would not let you go see at the end of their life, and let's say you had been married to them for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and then they wouldn't allow you to go see your spouse before they had, uh, passed away, then it would have been a priority to those particular people telling me that. And it really kind of still hurts my heart a little bit that they don't understand the power of this particular bill and that how bad we need it. I had one other friend that said, listen, I had a wife that had a miscarriage five months into the pregnancy she was in the hospital having a c-section by herself while i had to stay in the parking lot i mean that is ridiculous and so this bill creates uh for a path for essential caregivers that will be able to be in the hospital with their loved ones for minimum two hours a day and plus visiting hours if there are visiting hours. But there is a difference between visiting hours and essential caregivers. And th what this does is allow that terminology so that you have your loved ones with you and those uh, crisis moments of, for your family. Now, I know you said that this is, is going to fly through the Senate, and, I, and I, I don't see any opposition for this in the House, really. What about the Hospital Association? Have they offered up any resistance to this? I mean, obviously this is happening because of the decisions – uh, that governments and hospitals made uh, it, during the pandemic. And, and, you know, they were they were poor mouthing uh, last uh, last week. Uh, uh, Williamson was poor mouthing. The head of the hospital association uh, was basically saying we need three hundred seventy five million. We lost one point five billion dollars in the last. Episode. Said, well, the reason why they lost all that money is they stopped doing all the elective surgeries uh, during the pandemic. And that that crushed them. I mean, it, it, uh, yes, there was a lot of stuff going on. Yes. But it all went on way too long. Have they pushed back against this at all? You know, the, the original, when I set this bill in, originally they did. Obviously, they were in my office the next morning at 7 o'clock. Um, and the same thing with the healthcare workers. After I went through committee, we asked, hey, let's have a group meeting together. 
in the end though, Dale, the process happened and the process, they knew that people want this bill to pass in the legislature everyone that you talk to on your show. I think if you asked, if you had a story about this bill, and how this particular, how it affected you during the pandemic. Everyone has a story, whether it's a family member, a friend, a loved one that was not allowed access to be by the by, uh, the bedside of someone that they loved. And so from that, now that this has grown from a two, two and a half year period from the pandemic, this is a very popular bill that I think the Alabamians want. Now, when they came into uh, my office to talk about to begin with, there was some language in the bill that they didn't want. I wanted some more language and pushed and the process back and forth happened. And in the end, because I believe that we were able to put this in a special session and they wanted more money for that 375 million instead of the million that they were getting, uh, this was a factor in trying to go ahead and get this bill to the forefront so that we could clarify exactly the language that was in this legislation. So I'm not going to say that they um, were totally opposed to this, but in the end, we all have a bill that makes sense and that they are for the hot the nursing homes are for the trial lawyers are even for, and then we sat down and has the language that I need to make sure that people in Alabama are able to go into the hospital and to the healthcare facilities to see their loved ones. Good. I'm glad this is going to come through. I know this has been a, a big issue for a lot of people, including yourself, and, I, and I'm glad to see this passing. Uh, before I let you go, though, I had to ask you about some other stuff going on uh, in the Alabama legislature. There are a couple issues uh, that are on the table. You are now seeing uh, the Port Creek Indians. Uh, they're saying, hey, look, um, gambling, uh, it's good. Uh, we need to start having this conversation uh, again. But I just don't see any appetite for it uh, in the Alabama legislature. Things have surprised me sometimes. Uh, but gambling, uh, $700 million allegedly on the table, all these things, is that having any impact, those ads having any impact on members of the legislature at this point? I think they're having uh, inf the new information to some of the new guys that are coming in the House and the Senate may be affecting them. But there has not been that much discussion that I have seen in the Alabama State Senate about this. Part of that is we've passed gaming legislation the last four years in a row and has gone to the house to die. And so we're just looking this year saying, okay, maybe if the house starts something and sends it up, then we won't be wasting our time on gaming legislation like we have in the past. And I'm not blaming the full house for that by any means, but it is, um, has been stopped in the house the last four years. Um, there are starting to be discussions this week, starting, I would say the first week of the regular session after the special session the last two weeks. But this week there is gonna be a, a little, get together, let's say, from the Tourism Committee to talk about gaming, but I don't see there's enough votes in the Senate to pass it this year. I mean, if we were going to pass it, we needed to do it with the people that were on the outgoing uh, the last the last session, anyway, the last quadrennium. Yeah, you had the, the guy who proposed the bill, the Senate pro tem, and the House Speaker all in the last month have said, I don't think so. Uh, so it would be interesting if it moves at all. There are things that are kind of people are going to agree with maybe quibble on the corners on on things like economic incentives and stuff like that exhibition driving things like that uh, another issue that is controversial that i think maybe isn't there quite yet in the alabama legislature but nationally the conversation on school choice is a really big deal um my listeners uh, the people who read me at yellhammernews.com people i talk to they are constantly talking about school choice i'm being told that legislators aren't really hearing that from the people uh, except from the hyper politically engaged. Now that is said to me to say, Hey, uh, this isn't really that much of a priority. We're probably not going to see it, but I, I think the momentum is swinging. Do you see momentum for school choice? Maybe not this year or maybe so. What do you think? I think that it's going to be a heavy discussed topic. I think that you are going to see information and a legislation brought for school choice. Um, just like you said, I think people in the state would like to have a vote on this. And when it affects your children or your grandchildren that are going to school, then it's just like the high priority of my visitation bill. It affects you every day and you want the best for your children and you don't think it's fair if other children have a better school than what you do but you know there's also a fight with the public schools versus the charter schools on this whole deal and are you going to be taking money away from public schools and so you're going to still have that fight in the house too but from that i do think it will come up this year i do think there are discussions behind the scenes about school choice and it's a pretty big topic so um, i believe you're going to see that before the end of this uh, session Governor Kay Ivey talked about school choice in her state of the state speech. I don't consider what she was talking about to actually be school choice. 
Uh, I consider it to be sort of a canard, uh, the charter schools, stuff like that. I'm for those, and I, I think that's a part of it. But she specifically avoided mentioning vouchers and things like that, uh, education savings accounts and, and things of that uh, nature. That's what I view school choice as. Do you agree with that? Do you want to see that? And does that have any chance? Real school choice under my framing. Yeah, once you start talking about school choice, when you start talking with what Kay Ivey said in the state of the state, there was a lot of um, uh, blanks that she left open. And I think part of that is to have discussions with the leadership in the House and the Senate. I believe she positioned herself well to be able to maneuver in this particular topic while she was talking. And I think it was smart for her politically because she's able to maneuver where she finds out in the end that people want to be. And that is probably what you are talking about um, on, with, on your show and what you are framing that up to answer your question. I believe in the end that she is gonna be able to come to the table with a package. And I believe she's gonna come from her to the leadership. The question is when that leadership brings it to the house and to the Senate, is that going to end up being the same package that is passed through the education policy? And I don't know the answer to that question. There's a lot of people throughout this state that have different districts, whether that is what they call school choice and what they think of a school choice. And so it should be very interesting to see what happens in the next few months uh, with that process happening. Hey, let me see if I understand this correctly. This will be the last thing we're going to talk about. Kay Ivey could potentially come forward with a plan that includes vouchers, charter schools, all these other things. And she bring that to the table? I believe I'm not saying that she's going to bring it to the table. I do think that she wants to see something pass because she sees how popular this is nationwide and statewide. And I believe that she would be uh, leading a charge to make sure the school choice was what was the best for Alabama. She'll be bringing that and talking with our leadership. The leadership will be bringing that to the House and to the Senate. But there's definitely going to be conversations about school choice uh, behind closed doors before it hits uh, the rank and file members of the Senate and in the House. Are you pro voucher? Yeah, I, I yes, I'm for what happens in my district is we're public schools. And so my superintendents are getting together with me on a meeting coming up. Open uh, doors, let's say, is different than what they're used to. But I want to make sure that I represent and vote for my district the way that my superintendents are asking me to. OK, there we go. Garland Gudger, thank you very much, State Senator. Uh, the Coleman area, we always appreciate uh, you being available and speaking with us, and we'll definitely be in touch uh, with him soon. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me on the show, Dale. Talk to you soon. All right, All right. lots of stuff being discussed here, and boy, oh boy, I, I think that there is a little bit of news there, uh, and that is uh, that school choice maybe has a little bit more steam than I thought it did. You guys know me. I'm a huge school choice guy. I love the idea of school choice. I want to see more school choice, and that includes vouchers, uh, education savings account, whatever you want to call them. Uh, I think that's fantastic. I've always said this, and I will continue repeating this until I'm done. Uh, Huntsville City Schools are not good enough for my kid. I don't think they're good enough for your kid either. Only I have the ability, the option. I'm graced with the way uh, to send him to the school I want to send him to. I want to give you guys that opportunity uh, as well. We'll obviously discuss this a lot more here on Yellowhammer Now. Uh, follow the story at yellowhammernews.com.